This is lesson 74.5, and this will be the last lesson before you have your review and test. So let's take a look at these right here. So we're going to start off with A. And on A, this is from lesson 71. That's what we did at the very beginning. We're just trying to find the area of this uh, region that's being enclosed by this function and that function, right? So if you remember, we would have the integral of the top curve minus the bottom curve. And in this case, the top curve is this pink line right here, and the bottom curve is this parabola. All right, so the equation of that one, if you can see it, let me go ahead and highlight it at least, would be that, and the equation for this one would be this one, okay? So in this case, the top line would be 3x plus 3. So we have 3x plus 3. Now we're going to subtract the, equa the function of the bottom line. All right, the bottom line in this case happens to be the parabola. So we have x plus 1 squared dx. All right, so we're going to integrate that between this point right here and that point right here, which is actually given to us by this, uh, by this intersection that are given to us. So we're going to go between negative 1 and 2. Okay, so we're going to go between negative 1 and 2. Now, if, at this point, I would like you to use a calculator. And if we integrate that on our calculator, it's 4.5. And we're going to keep it to three decimal places. So that's why I wrote 4.500. 4 0, 0. All right, let's go to B now. Now, on B, they're asking us for the volume when R, remember R is the shaded region, when R is rotated about the X axis. All right, so if I grab this shaded region and I rotate it around the X axis, what would that volume be? And if you remember from my previous lesson, this will create a washer because if I spin this around the X axis, I'm gonna create what a washer, basically a shape with a hole in the middle. Okay, so if you remember the formula for that was the volume of a washer is equal to pi uh, in this case, since we're going to rotate around the x-axis, we can say between x1 and x2 for our boundaries of the larger radius minus the smaller radius, uh, in this case, dx. Okay? So because of that, notice that the larger radius is going to be made uh, by this distance right here. The larger radius is going to be this, the distance between this line and this equation. All right, so that right there is going to be, uh, they're going to have the same bounds between negative 1 and positive 2. Okay, so the larger radius is going to be equal to uh, basically this equation minus the equation of this line, which is 0. All right, so basically what I'm looking for is that distance right here, which will be 3x plus 3. Now again, notice that I'm going to square that. All right, I'm going to square that radius, so I'm going to square this. And now we're going to subtract the, the smaller radius, which is made by this parabola and this x-axis right here. So that will be um, x plus 1 squared. And that's the equation of that curve. And then I'm going to square that smaller radius, dx. Right? And when I do that, I'm going to get that the answer will be equal to 101.788. All right, so that's how you do it. Remember, if you get to right here, I would love for you to use a calculator. Um, you feel free to simplify if you want to, but mistakes could happen when you do that. All right, on C, they want, they want to find the volume when R, when R is rotated about the line Y is equal to 9. So that line Y is equal to 9, um, I'm going to put this in a different color. It's also pink, so hopefully you don't get confused. That line right there would be equal to y is equal to 9. So that's that line right there. So picture if I spin this all right, around this axis, if I spin this like that, then that would also create a washer. All right, But now the outer radius is going to be the distance between here and here. And the smaller radius is going to be the distance between this line and this equation right here okay so 
the formula is exactly the same. I'm going to move up. Hopefully, you can follow along. The volume of a washer is going to be equal to pi between negative 1 and 2. Okay, so we need to find the distance between uh, the outer radius, which is this parabola, and this line right here. And to do that easily, what you can do is you can have the top curve, which is this one, minus the bottom curve. So I'm going to have 9 minus x plus 1 squared, which is the equation of this line. All right, so one more time, I'm going to have 9 minus x plus 1 squared. Right, so that's the top curve minus the bottom curve. And now I'm going to square this only because if you remember, the formula says that it's supposed to be the radius squared. So this inside of here, that's my radius, and now I have to square it. Okay? And then we're going to subtract the smaller radius that's being formed by this line and 3x plus 3, which is this line also. All right, so I'm going to find the radius between here and here. So again, I'm going to use the same trick. I'm going to use, I'm going to use top curve minus bottom curve. So I have 9 minus 3x plus 3 square dx. And that will give me 152.681. Okay. All right, so that's that. Let's go on to D. D is the same type of problem as C, but instead of rotating around the line y is equal to 9, we're going to rotate this around the line y is equal to negative 3. All right, so negative 3 would be right here. So this is y is equal to negative 3. So this is the y is equal to negative 3. So now, if, please picture this. If you can, if you were to spin this shape around this, right, if you were to spin that around, around this line right here, notice that, again, you would have a washer where the outside radius would be the distance between this line and this pink line right here. And the inner radius, the smaller radius, would be the distance between this line and this pink highlighted area or sorry, highlighted line. Okay, so one more time, what I'm gonna do is write the formula for a washer, for the volume of a washer, and I'm gonna have the top curve, now I'm gonna do this for the big radius, so the top curve is gonna be this right here. Notice that again, I'm trying to look for the distance between here and here because that would be my larger radius. All right, so that distance right there would be top curve minus bottom curve. So I would have 3x, let's see, I would have 3x plus 3 minus a negative 3. Remember, this negative 3 came because my equation of that line, that blue line that I have up there, is the equation of that is y is equal to negative 3. Now I'm going to square this. And again, I'm only squaring this because of this formula. See, this radius square. And now we're going to subtract the radius of the smaller distance. All right, so we're going to subtract the smaller radius, which is the distance between here and here. And I'm going to use the same trick, which is the top curve, which is this, minus the bottom curve, which is that number. So we have the top curve, which is x plus 1 squared, minus the bottom curve. And I want to square that. And uh, on this one, I guess it would be a, a terrible idea if you try to try to simplify this. I think that might make your life easier when typing this in the calculator. So that would be like uh, 3x plus 6, right? If I add this and this together, square this minus, let's see, if I square that, that will give me, well, I'm just going to leave that alone, actually. I'm just going to have uh, cx plus 1 square plus 3. I want to square that. All right, and if I, if I square that and if I take the antiderivative or if I integrate this with my calculator, I get that the answer would be 
0.611. All right. Now, finally, I'm going to go to E. Right on E. Let me scoot up. On E, it says the volume of when R is the base of a solid and the cross section, the cross section of the solid are right isosceles triangles with one leg perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, if you remember right isosceles triangles, all right, that would basically means you have two sides that are equal. You have that and that would be equal and really who cares about this because it tells me that one of these legs, one of these legs is perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? So basically, if, I don't know if you're, able, you're gonna be able to see that. Uh, let me do it with a pen, see if you can see that. They're gonna be sitting like that. Okay, so they're gonna be sitting like that. So that's my that's my delta x, so that's the thickness of the triangle. So if I have that, notice that the first step, like I always told you, and this is a right isosceles triangle. The area of a triangle is one half base times height. And remember, I'm not going to use the same formula that I've used in the past because this is not an equilateral triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. But I think the formula is much easier. So we have one half S. The, the base is S and the height is S. So this will be one half S squared. All right, so this is that. And if you remember, and this is from 74, I believe, what you do after this is you're gonna try to find the this side, you're gonna try to find the length, which is this length right here. Right, so basically it's the same thing to find that length. I'm gonna have the top curve minus the bottom curve. So I have the top curve. So let me write it down. So S is equal to the top curve minus the bottom curve. So that would be S is equal to 3X plus 3 minus X plus 1 squared. And again, this is the equation of the top curve. That's the equation of the bottom curve. Okay, so the area for one of those triangles, right? So the area for just one of those triangles would be equal to uh, 1 half 3X plus 3 minus x plus one square square all right now again I, I, this right here this is the side all right so again this right here that would just be that s without the square all right so that's that's what that would be so finally to integrate this therefore all we have to do is really just integrate this right here all right so i'm going to integrate that and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one half out completely, all right? So we're gonna have the volume, volume of the cross section is equal to uh, the integral between negative one and two of, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one half here, of all of this stuff down here. So we have three x plus three minus x plus one square square dx so that was the hard part so if you have that you can just plug that in your calculator and you get that the answer is going to be 4.054050 sorry 4.050 and that would be units cubed but we're going to leave it like that okay so this can be very simple or very hard, depending on how much practice you have. If you feel like you need more practice, please come see me. Um, I'm sure I can come up with something. If you have any questions, please let me know.